Welcome to our review on circuits and potential difference. Now, the first thing that we actually need to know before we can tackle anything in this topic are some of those key circuit symbols. Now, hopefully these are rather reminiscent of ones that we've looked at back in key stage three, but there is no easy way to do this other than sitting there and learning them. So one way you could do that is by creating little flashcards with obviously the name of the component on one side and then the symbol on the other. But you do need to know all of those different symbols within the table on the screen there. So make sure you find some way to practice and learn them. Now, in order to actually make a current flow in a circuit, we've actually got to have a potential difference. Now, what causes the potential difference is the separation of charges within that particular cell or battery. And what we find is that when you look at any battery, it's not about the size of the battery that gives us different potential differences. It's about how it's been constructed. So don't fall into the trap of thinking just because it's a bigger battery in terms of its size that it's going to have a larger potential difference because that's not the case. But what we do find is that when we've separated those charges within that battery, then we've got one side positively charged and the other side is then negatively charged. So when we're actually looking at the electrical potentials of those two terminals, what we find is that the positive terminal has a higher electrical potential than the negative one. Hence the phrase potential difference. It's our difference in potential between our positive terminal and our negative. When we're actually measuring the potential difference, we're going to use that bit of equipment called a voltmeter and we will get a reading that has the units of volts, which is a capital V. What we actually do need to remember is when we come to draw our circuit diagrams to make sure that we have very clear positive and negative terminals. So the positive terminal on a cell has a much longer line than the negative terminal. Now, do go careful when you draw these on an exam to make sure that your longer line is quite visibly longer than the negative terminal. Otherwise, what you're going to find is it might create that little bit of doubt and you may inadvertently lose the mark just by not being clear enough with your diagram. What we find then is that when we apply a potential difference between the ends of a wire, we get an electric field set up inside it. Now, this is something that happens incredibly quickly so that basically as soon as you've connected it, the charge to particles are actually going to start to move straight away. Now, we do have another calculation associated with this particular topic in P3. First thing we need to do, though, is understand what we're referring to when we talk about electrical working. So quite simply, if we're talking about electrical working, then we're looking at the method of transferring energy from the chemical stores to the chemical components themselves. If you are asked to calculate the energy transferred, because we're talking about energy, that will always be a value in joules. And to work it out, you can use potential difference times by the charge. Now, this is, again, one of those equations that you need to remember for your physics exam. So to give you an example of the kind of question they could ask us on this, a defibrillator has a potential difference of 500 volts and needs to transfer 125 joules of energy. Calculate the charge. So the first thing you'll notice is that we're going to have to rearrange our actual equation there. So we've been given our energy transferred and the potential difference. So therefore, we need to change it so that charge is the actual subject of our formula. So again, we can use a triangle to do this. Or if you're happier just using standard rearranging rules, pick whichever one works for you. So once you've rearranged, substitute in the numbers from the question. So in this case, 125 divided by 500, and then you'll get your answer of 0.25. And again, don't forget to include the units if they're not given to you as part of the answer line. 